Member Fazillo and the Pledge of Allegiance and stay standing for the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Almighty Father, please provide wisdom for those of us on the dais to make good decisions for our citizens. Keep our men and women in uniform, both serving here in the U.S. and abroad, out of harm's way. And please provide safe passage for all those heading home after this meeting. In thy name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Councilman Pazillo. All right, we're all here this evening, so we'll go to the communications. We have one communication item. The staff will provide an update on the fiscal year 1617 Parks and Right Away Asset <laughs> Management Program. Park Superintendent Jeremy Fugaro. Uh, you know the song Fugaro, Fugaro? Yeah, well, okay. It must come from your family. It does. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council. <clears throat> um, I'd like to, uh, I'm here tonight to present um, on the Parks and Right Away Asset mm -hmm. Management Plan for FY 16 and 17. As soon as I, there we go. All right. So tonight, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of the FY 16, 17 projects for the first year of our asset management plan in parks and right of ways. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second, because it's my first time up here in a little while, so I'm a little nervous. Do you need, do you need some water? No, I'm good. Okay. Don't, All right. don't so, be nervous, okay? We're just people you're talking to, and we're interested in what you're saying, so just relax. All right. So uh, FY16-17 Asset Management Plan, we had a total of 112 projects, totaling $5.1 million, disbanded across nine parks and 18 separate right-of-way areas. And uh, tonight I'm going to be giving you a... Uh, some highlights of some of the park projects that we kind of took pride in and uh, some before and after pictures. So first here we have Estrella Vista South Park. They had a total of $82,000 uh, uh, that we put towards this park uh, with the playground improvements that you see. Uh, we tried to uh, hit on all the curb appeal areas, if you will. Uh, so all the areas where the entry points of the park, you can see that we added some new plantings and tried to just create a little bit more of a inviting feel to the parks. In here, we also uh, added uh, new plantings that have a little bit less maintenance than before. Uh, all of them are the, on the ADWR planting list and all of them are uh, lower maintenance and lower water use than what we had had before in the park. This area right here, as you can see, we created some density, but all the plants that are in this area um, will mature with less maintenance than, and uh, it helps maintain the park a little bit easier for our staff as well as inviting for the residents. Canada Village, we had $169,000 in this park, uh, total for this project. We replaced the playground. As you can see, we cre uh, added a shade cell over the playground and a new Ramada just behind the playground. Uh, you can see we added some uh, barbecue grills, trash cans, and new picnic benches. We added a new uh, basketball court with basketball hoop, uh, some uh, walkways and ADA uh, compliant um, entry points to the park uh, that completed this park. Palm Valley Park, we had a total of $233,000 go into this park. As you can see the old playground here, and here's a picture of the new playground with the shade cell structure. One of our biggest amenities at this park, I think we have lines of, of kids every day waiting for to get on the zip line that you see in the background. Um, I, it's, it's just been a real treat for the kids and, it, and we're real proud of that project. The park also received new granite, new plantings, trees, and here's a before and after of this shot. Um, 
it really does give a little bit more uh, curb appeal to the park. And we also are going to be replacing uh, the uh, exercise equipment in the park. Uh, we repainted the uh, ramadas and uh, added some new trees in the park as well. Loma Linda Park. Total project for this budget for this park was two hundred seventy-eight thousand um, dollars. Here you see a shot of the, bas uh, the tennis court, and we redid the tennis court, adding a new surfacing and new two new basketball hoops to make this a multi-use court for both basketball and tennis. Also, we we took in in an effort to increase the efficiency of the flood irrigation system in the park, we took out some of the grass that went all the way to the curb. Mm -hmm. So we uh, installed the curb, put new granite, new plantings, um, one to create a buffer for the kids that are playing in the, in the turf area, so that way they're not playing right up against the sidewalk or the street in this community, but also to help with the flood irrigation in this park. Here's a shot from the west side of the park where we have now put two new horseshoe pits and took out some of the unused turf and just put granite in an effort to reduce the amount of water in that park. We also, we also uh, as part of a supplemental that was received for Loma Linda Park, we did some pool improvements. Here's a picture of, of one of the decks before and after. Here's during construction, and here it is afterwards. Uh, some of the pool repairs uh, consisted of new fencing and new deck uh, replacement. Uh, that was not part of the asset management plan, but we figured we wanted to show what all was being done at this park, um, so wanted to highlight that. Here's a new parking lot for, for the Loma Linda Park. That parking lot was original. It was in pretty bad shape, and as you can see, the residents uh, have uh, commented on this quite, quite considerably. So, park lighting project. This was one of our projects that we took on with, we had a lot of light poles in the parks that were in pretty bad shape. Um, we took on a light, uh, park lighting project that consisted of five parks and totaling $483,000. The project uh, consisted of Palm Valley Park, Park of the Paz, Estrella Vista South, Rio Paseo, and Loma Linda. Some of the new features that we created in the park was fiberglass poles to reduce or minimize, or I, I should say eliminate the, uh, the rusting and erosion from the, from the sprinklers and being in the water. New LED heads, and with these heads, we added motion sensors so that the park now runs from dusk to dawn, but all the lights operate at 30% until it's uh, triggered by motion, and then they go to full 100%. So that way it saves the, the amount of electricity that we're using, since we, we were going from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., if you will, in most parks. Now we have more lighting from dusk to dawn, which helps create a little bit safer environment for in the neighborhood, keep some of the lights on in the park, just so that way we don't get anybody in there after hours doing anything they shouldn't be. So a recap of the park projects. Um, just a few things that I would like to point out. In addition to the recreational opportunities that, we, that we've provided through the new horseshoe pits, the new multi-sport courts that, with, that offer basketball and tennis, are the shade cells that we have uh, added into the parks. Now all 18 of our parks have shade cells, so every park that a kid plays in in a city park it now has shade covering the, the playground. In addition to this, we had four community build, playground builds. Uh, out of those four community playground builds, we had 150, over 150 volunteers uh, dedicate their time to uh, building these playgrounds, which has increased uh, the sense of ownership and has also cut down on vandalism in our parks as people are more regularly uh, Policing the playgrounds if you will. So it's it's really been a big big uh, I guess uh, ha 
we, we've been pretty proud of it, so. <laughs> so right away highlights. <clears throat> One of the right away highlights that, that we did, here, here is a picture of 144th Avenue, just south of Indian School. This was part of the granite project for that through asset management, where you can see here, we, we, we had a, the larger riprap in the bottom of the, of the channel here, because it's a drainage channel, but we also had a lot of erosion issues on the backside of this right away. So we added the riprap all the way to the homeowner's wall to reduce the amount of erosion that we'll get through the rainy season. Here's another picture of Palm Valley Boulevard just north of McDowell. Here we have some plants that we were trying to maintain under uh, two foot because of the sight line visibility constraints in this area. And here's the picture after. Again, we are targeting uh, plantings that were on the ADWR list, low water use and low maintenance. Mm -hmm. uh, this was taken about a month after we did the plantings. So they'll thrive a little bit more, get a little bit bigger, but they'll all maintain the height uh, allowable under the uh, site visibility concerns. Here's another shot of Palm Valley Boulevard where we replaced the granite and you can see we added a few plants to try to fill some of the areas that were void, that were little voided areas throughout the, the right of way. This is uh, in Canto Boulevard and Dysart, another entry to Palm Valley Phase 1. Um, we wanted to, to uh, increase the appeal coming into the neighborhood on all entries to Palm Valley Boulevard as part of our plan. Um, and we've gotten a lot of, received a lot of compliments on this. Um, as you can see here, the plantings are, that we installed give a lot of color and uh, make a lot of impact. Palm Valley Boulevard. Here's just, just north of, or just south of uh, Clubhouse Drive. And here's after. We added some plants and trees that were missing throughout the median. And as you can see, the new granite. This is the right of way on the west side where we replaced the granite. And we also tried to main, we also maintained the uh, stabilized walk path that you see there in the background. So, uh, we had a lot of people that say they do use that and we wanted to make sure that we kept that intact and making it look really nice. McDowell, just across from West Valley Hospital. Um, we received a lot of discussion over this street. Uh, what was the future expansion of the right of way? What was going on? And uh, I, I have good news to tell you that this is the way the street looks today. Um, here we, we took and added some larger gradation granite, larger riprap, trying to break up some of the planting areas to minimize the amount of plantings, but also increase the amount of water that we can uh, hold in the median for in each rain event. We added some trees and some plants. Uh, again, all just trying to uh, create some different uh, textures in the median and, and in order to get away from the plain, just flat areas. Estrella Parkway, just south of MC 85, this was a median that wasn't, that was unimproved. And this is kind of an entry point to Estrella community. And with this median not having any water, we were, we looked at this median and tried to figure out what can we do different here as a way of en making an entry point to the mountains uh, and into Estrella. And this is after. So here we again created some swells with some larger gradation granite and added some boulders as a way of trying to create some highs and lows, some focal points in the median, so that way we didn't have have plantings to try to uh, appeal to people. We put in the boulders and uh, we think we knocked this one out of the park and we've gotten a lot of compliments on this median as well. Litchfield Road, just north of, of McDowell. Here you can see uh, some of the bullnose areas, we are having problems with some of these bullnose areas all throughout the city. Uh, it, it's really hard to maintain uh, vibrant plantings in, this, in these areas. 
just because the amount of heat that we get is just not ideal settings for uh, uh, plantings. So what we did was we took in and added some large, larger riprap in place of some of those plantings, and then we put plantings in more of the right plant, right place, again on the ADWR list, um, just try to recreate uh, something that, that looks visibly appealing to people as they pass by and really put plants where, where we feel is going to make the most impact for our residents and the driving public. Yuma Road, just outside of Wildflower Ranch. Here's the, right, the north right of way, and here's after. Again, you could see the granite and some of the plantings that we added. We added a few trees because this area did have a lot of mature trees, so we only were trying to replace what we had lost over the years. This is Wildflower Boulevard and Harrison. Um, again, we took out some of those larger plantings and put in some smaller plantings that have less maintenance and gives a lot more curb appeal. So recapping by the numbers here, right away, we had 18 separate areas. <clears throat> the, the communities that seen the largest impact by these improvements were Palm Valley, Phase 1, Pebble Creek, Estrella, and Wildflower. Uh, Litchfield Road and McDowell were the major street sections that were completed. And again, our focus was trying to minimize uh, maintenance where we could, improve safety, uh, for our staff as well as contractors that are working in the right-of-ways in the, in the motoring and in, in for the public. Um, and uh, we think that we did a pretty good job of, of completing these projects. Um, and if I can, one last thing I'd like to add. This was not a part, well, this was not part of the asset management plan, but it was a supplemental given to us uh, by you, mayor and council for the Foothills Community Park. It was one of our only parks that did not have a playground. And uh, through the $125,000 supplemental, we uh, created a playground with a seat wall and uh, a new place for kids to play in uh, one of our su most southern parks. Uh, again, we had a lot of people turn out for this, including some of our council members. Uh, so we appreciate it. And uh, that concludes my presentation tonight. And David Side will be up a little bit later to talk about uh, FY18. Hey, Jeremy, it was a good presentation. I would not have known this was your first one. So congratulations. <laughs> and I know council's going to want to make some comments. So who would like to be first? <laughs> Bill? <laughs> you laughing at me? No. no. <laughs> Jeremy, we talked uh, before the meeting um, just an outstanding job on uh, changing it up. Uh, those medians were getting old and tired looking, and you did a great job, you and the staff um, from the Parks Department. You guys should be very proud of yourselves. Um, you know, taking, uh, taking the cash that we give you and turning it into something wonderful. So um, thanks for all your hard work. Please pass it along to everybody down at Parks. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Stiff. Councilman Hampton. Sure. Yeah, so I think these are great sense of pride for the community and a great meeting places for people and makes the communities better a great place for people like I said to meet and have that sense of community and and uh, yeah I, I, I love them I, I go use the parks with, with my kids pretty often and we've been to almost every park now and I've used that zip line so it's it's it's, it's, it's councilman approved so <laughs> it's good thank you Councilman Bazillo <laughs> Again, I want to I want to thank you for for doing such a great job and pass down the information to all the individuals who've been part of this. You know, I've had people uh, visit from out of state, and they they think that our uh, our city is brand new because of the pristine nature of it and and how well it's kept. And when you're trying to recruit businesses or getting people to to look at you as a city, um, you get nothing but great things when you see some of our meetings and some of the things that you do. So again, by my heart, thank you. I I, I really think it adds greatly to the look and feel of our city when you make these kind of improvements. Councilman Loretano. Thank you so much. Great presentation, first of all. You did a wonderful job. And thank you and all the whole Parks Department for all the improvements. When you look at the before and after, it's really amazing, um, some of the changes. I want to give you, I, I live up in Australia, 
So I want to tell you the medium was just, I, I've heard so many positive feedbacks about that because it really does tie in well to the mountain. And, and for those that are no, don't drive up that way, they went up the whole mountain to tie into where Newland started. So it really is a, a consistent all the way up the mountain. So I really like that. And, and the playground up there, um, you guys did an excellent job. That was a hit it out of the ballpark. I've had several parents um, come up to me and say they're really glad that really enhances the park up there and makes it a more full service park for the whole family. So thank you very much. Councilman Osborne. Well, Jeremy, you and your team, you guys are doing a great job, and we're proud of everything that you've done. And uh, I have to tell you that to, to some residents here that may not have lived here as long as some of, some of us have, some of these areas are 20 years old that, that desperately needed that, those changes. And uh, it's kind of exciting for the fact, I mean, I live in Palm Valley 1, lived there for over 15 years, so I've certainly seen, you know, that difference. And uh, when you showed the, the before and after, you know, almost brings tears to my eyes because I, I see my kids on that equipment, and now I see my grandkids on that equipment, the new equipment. And now, of course, not on the zip line. He's too little for that. But it's, it's really awesome. It's, you know, it's really a, a great thing to be proud of. The fact that every um, tot lot now is completely covered in our parks is truly important. And it's amazing what... Um, larger granite does for a look, doesn't it? And, and you guys have been, been so creative in the way that um, using the, the plant life that we need that's going to be, um, especially I know that's, that's something that Councilmember Bazillo really, you know, talks about a lot is making sure they're water efficient type of plants. And I know you mentioned ADWR a few times, good for you. So that, that was really important. But then having the, the granite that we know is, is of size that's going to last some more years than that fine, you know, pea dirt, as I would call it. But anyway, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Vice Mayor Campbell. Well, Jeremy and Nathan, isn't it amazing what you can do when council gives you some money? <laughs> We've talked about you doing our right-of-ways for years, and, and you did what you could. And this year, we really made an effort to see that you had the money to do what you needed to do. I spent part of Sunday at La Loma Park, and of course I had to Facebook the, the amenities that were there. It was a free swim day, so I had a lot of fun talking to all of the parents in there. They do love that parking lot. They're so happy with it. And they also wanted to thank us for redoing the cool decking part. The parents think it's just, it's a beautiful, the fencing looks gorgeous. The Horseshoe Park looks wonderful. and just changing the curb appeal on, on part of that park has changed the whole feel of that park. It really is beautiful. So thank you. And all the right-of-ways look wonderful. I love how you do the decorative rock. To me, you can do decorative rock anywhere and no plants. I'm happy with that because it makes such a difference. And I love the low plants because now our folks don't have to go and trim them and it's easier for the drivers to see. So thank you so much. You're so creative, and I've seen that in you for years and years and years. You, you just come up with the best things, Jeremy. So thank you so much, and thank all of your crew for us. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, you know, we don't do this alone. We have a great parks and recreation team, right away team, and uh, you know, we, we lean on a lot of our city departments, uh, engineering streets a lot of the time to try to get a lot of these things done because we are working in their realm uh, uh, of expertise, if you will. So we lean on a lot of our departments to make this happen. So it truly is a team effort. Well, I want to say too, I wanted Cheryl and Councilman Holman, before she left, we talked about the ADA. And uh, so I'm going to thank you on behalf of her, the entries that you've done. It's very important. Sometimes we forget that and it is so important. And the other thing is, uh, this is all to do with asset management. Mm -hmm. So I think throughout the departments, we've made uh, known that we certainly want our assets to be kept in premier state, and that's what we're doing. I think that, that says a great deal. So great presentation. And one thing you will have to remember that this does is we have a lot of land undeveloped in Goodyear. So when people drive by, they don't really like how that looks. So when we at least, when they drive by the, the developed areas, they see a pristine and, and really well done landscape. That sort of helps balance that feeling that people have when they're touring our city. So 
Great job. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you, Council Mayor. All right. Now is the time for citizens who would like to address the City Council on any non-agenda item within the jurisdiction of the Goodyear City Council. Do we have any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Does anyone in the audience want to speak? All right. With that, then we're going to go on to the consent agenda. And would the city clerk please read the consent agenda items 6.1 and 6.2 by title only, please. Item 6.1, approved draft minutes from a regular meeting held on June 12, 2017, and a regular meeting held on June 26, 2017. Item 6.2, approved mayor and council appointments to council subcommittees for fiscal year 1718. Number one, boards, commissions, and committee appointments subcommittee. Reappoint Councilmember Osborne, Councilmember Laura Tano, and appoint Vice Mayor Campbell. Item two, Community Funding Review Subcommittee. Reappoint Councilmember Osborne, Councilmember Pazillo, and Vice Mayor Campbell. Item number three, Audit Con Subcommittee. Reappoint Councilmember Laura Tano, Councilmember Pazillo, and appoint Councilmember Hampton. Thank you. Does anyone from the public wish to remove an item from this consent agenda? Does anyone on the council wish to remove an item? All right, then let's go ahead. Could I have a motion and second to approve this consent agenda? So move. Second. Second. I heard a motion by Vice Mayor Campbell and a second by Councilman okay, Osborne. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7-0. All right, let's go down to the business. And the first item is the 7.1 is on the business to appoint the board members to the Self-Insured Health Care Trust Board. Human Resources Director Lyman Lockett to present. Lyman. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Tonight I'm here to bring forth a recommendation to appoint our newly formed Health Insurance Trust Board. Uh, pursuant to moving to self-funding, uh, to self-insured plans for our health care benefits, council approved ordinance number 17-1349 authorizing the city to create a self-insured trust board. The city council subcommittee for boards and commissions went through a selection process and interviewed several candidates. Uh, to fill four board seats. The makeup of the board uh, is a five board, uh, fi a board with five trustees, and it's made up of four citizens and one employee. Uh, the employee seat will be filled by our finance director in an ex officio capacity. Um, the subcommittee um, is recommending the appointment of the following members to the board. Wade Foster to a three-year term, Jennifer Prayer Bonton to a two-year term, also Michael uh, Balson to a two-year term, Richard Newcomer to a one-year term, and uh, the other thing that I would add is just uh, the key responsibilities of this trust board will be to provide financial oversight to the trust fund uh, by evaluating claims expenses on a, a, a monthly and quarterly basis, uh, review quarterly trust funds to ensure the sufficient funds exist to pay outstanding future benefits, make recommendations to the city manager for financial issues related to the health care benefit trust, um, comply with requirements of state and federal laws, uh, meet at least four times a year, and also comply with Arizona State open meeting laws. Um, so with that, uh, we were very pleased uh, with the caliber of candidates that were presented. Um, actually, the number uh, I was amazed with. Um, I don't want to speak for the, the uh, subcommittee. I'm sure you'll have something to say. but. Uh, I was uh, most impressed by the caliber of, of uh, people and the selection and feel very good about taking this next step into self-funding uh, with the board members that have been assembled. So, Thank you so much. Uh, I'm going to ask for a motion a second a moment, but I have to read the four items because we're going to vote them all at one time and then they will 
uh, take their oath of loyalty. So number one, appoint Wade Foster to a three-year term to the Self-Insured Health Care Trust Board, expiring July 10th, 2020. Two, appoint Michael Balson and Jennifer Prayer, Bo um, Bonten, or Bonten, whatever, to the two-year term to the Self-Insured Health Care Trust Board, which will expire July 10th, 2019. Appoint Richard Newcomer to one-year term to a self-insured health care trust board expiring July 10th, 2018. And appoint Finance Director Doug Sandstrom as the ex officio member to the self-insured health care trust board. So I need a motion and a second. So moved. Second. I heard a motion by Councilman Loritano and a second by uh, Councilman Hampton, uh, yeah, you just haven't been with us long enough. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> so open for council discussion. Yeah. I know I made it. Yeah. Councilman Stiff. Lyman, I've got um, just a couple of questions that I don't know, just kind of dawned on me as you were talking about this. You said there's, it's a five member board and we've got five people tonight, but one of them is ex officio, which means they don't vote. Uh, ex officio with voting privileges, so full voting privileges. Okay, all right, uh, that's question one. Question two is, does this board uh, look at anything beyond the finances? Will they be looking at plan? Plan design, absolutely. They'll make recommendations to the city manager back through the council on plan designs uh, based on the health of the plan and just looking out forward to ensure that our plan stays healthy over a period of time. When it comes to benefit, how the benefits are structured, that kind of thing, will this, does this board do that as well? Uh, I, I think in the, in the realm of uh, benefit design, they would certainly be making recommendations on um, situations that would keep our plans aligned with uh, the financial needs to to um, ensure that they are solvent. Okay, so one of the things we've always had has been a uh, an employee an employee health committee has been in existence for more than ten years. Um, does that group A still exist? Do they have a role and? I guess I'll save my Absolutely. Uh, that group will continue to exist and will continue to have a role uh, to be a conduit to employees to bring back uh, ideas as well. Uh, and these ideas would be uh, both working through the city manager from a recommendation standpoint as well as back through the, uh, the trust board. Okay, I'll leave it at that. Thanks. Councilman Loretano. Uh, I, I just want to thank everybody that's taking the time to, to be, become part of the board. I, I think you hit it right on the head when you said that it was um, a, a very qualified group of people. I was a little hesitant about the self-insurance at first, and then I, I saw the caliber and the knowledge of the people that are going to be on the board, and I think they will do an excellent job. So I want to congratulate them all, and thank you for taking your time and serving our city. Um, thank you very much. Councilman Osborne. Thank you. I, you know, I'd like to echo what Councilman Loretano said. It was really a privilege to meet um, the citizens that we have that stepped up and, and have this knowledge base. Um, you know, it was very impressive and uh, it was exciting. And I, I think that we have uh, a great uh, diverse group of, of the individuals that are going to be on this board because they all bring um, something to the table in, you know, the, the health related field and, and with insurance. And so, you know, it's really, um, I think we, we really got lucky. <laughs> you know, this is, this is a really exciting and we all know that, you know, this is a new endeavor that our city is, is taking. And so it's great that we have um, the citizens here that, that want to spend their time and, and step up and help the city out. It was great. Thank you. Councilman Brazillo. I've always mentioned, uh, <laughs> You know, as far as making sure we keep the plan in the last two years, we've had no increase whatsoever. Um, so, no, I'm, I've been, I'm really pleased how you've come back with this and managed to keep our cost and really much the plan itself intact over the last couple of years. So I kind of envision 
the financing compulsion, the wish list of the employees, what we can afford, what we can't afford, and the tweaking of the two to come back to the product before us. High level, that's how I kind of vision how this is going to work. So um, does that sound about right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, right on target. Right. And again, I thank you for all the efforts that you're doing putting these pieces together. Councilman Campbell? Um, Lyman, Vice thank Mayor you. Mayor Campbell, excuse me. That's okay. Thank you for sharing my questions with all of council. I appreciate that because I thought that I had missed the board and commission meeting on my trip. And that's why I said, when did they meet? Because I missed it. But I wasn't, it was the old board. And the next week I became a board member again on boards and commissions. So that was my first concern. My second concern was the selection. This is the first time that boards and commissions will have selected someone or residents for this type of a committee. And I wanted to know what they were looking for and what, uh, what the candidates actually had uh, as far as experience. And I noticed that a couple of them actually work for health uh, insurance companies, so they will be uh, great resources for us. Um, there was also my concern that we ensure that we have an employee representative on that committee. And I didn't pick up that the finance director was in fact going to represent all of our um, employees until you just mentioned that. Otherwise, I would have sent you another email, but I didn't want you to have to send it out to all the council that I ask another question on it. So he doesn't anyway. use your name. Don't worry about that. Okay, good. Well, I, I'm sorry that I put you through all of that, but I wanted to know how this actually worked. And uh, I'm assuming that Mr. Newcomer is our public member. Uh, uh, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor Campbell, uh, there are four citizen members and our uh, four citizen members and our uh, employee member is obviously uh, our, our finance director, but there are four citizen members. So Mr. Newcomer is one, uh, as well as the other three. That well, I get that, that they're citizens, Lyman, but they work for or were in the healthcare industry. So I was saying, is Ms. I don't know, I couldn't tell on his resume if, if he was with healthcare. And I was hoping that we had a public member resident on that committee, because I thought that might be important. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question, uh, very good point. His background is in uh, insurance on, um, actually on the union side, uh, looking at Taft-Hartley plans. Perfect. So he brings a very he, unique perspective to the board as well. Member. Good. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm the last here. First of all, I want to make sure I know how to pronounce Jennifer Pryor's last name. What was it? Bonten. Bonten. Thank you very much. So, council, we are very council, and, and the mayor is very pleased that we have people of this quality coming forth and taking these positions, and especially on subject matters that not all of us are that familiar with. Um, and expertise is not in our, in our realm. So thanks so much for forming this and making this happen. So council, we're gonna vote now so that then the city clerk can now administer the oath. So all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, the ayes have it. So the city clerk will now administer the oath of loyalty. Could, could they introduce who these folks yeah, are? Yeah, he will, that, yeah, we will. Okay. All right, do you wanna do that? One by one as they come up to introduce sure. them? Or we, okay, thank you. Uh, we have Michael Balton. Michael uh, is, um, you can introduce yourself in terms of, uh, his experience is in healthcare as well. Okay. I'll, I'll just give a very brief uh, overview um, with, uh, I wanted to say United Healthcare. Well, no, I'm, Healthnet. I'm presently a senior consultant with uh, HealthNet. Mm -hmm. HealthNet. Oh, and sure. I've been in the health insurance business for 35 years. Mm -hmm and uh, appreciate the opportunity to serve. So do we. Why don't you have each individual to come to the microphone and tell them who they are. This will certainly take it off your shoulders, so. We have uh, Wade Foster. Hello, uh, obviously Wade Foster. I'm a regional director for Cancer Treatment Centers of America, so I oversee insurance contracting for all five of their hospitals nationwide. Been with them for about six years, and prior to that, uh, worked with uh, Allegis Group providing home care services and supplemental staffing to hospitals and correctional facilities, as well as running flu shot programs. So, oh, that's quite glad a to. Thank it's you. An honor. Thank you. Thank you. Next. 
Good evening. I'm Jennifer Pierre-Bonton. I am the Director of Quality and Risk Management out at Luke Air Force Base. Uh, my experience is with military medicine, so I have 20 years. I'm retired uh, Air Force, and so I have a lot of experience. I have uh, my MBA and my Health Administration and Policy as well. Thank you for your service as well. better. <laughs> uh, it's an honor to be here. I'm, I appreciate being selected to serve on this trust. Uh, I have dealt with uh, trust funds, uh, as was mentioned, in Taft-Hartley programs. Uh, I was a trustee for over 30 years on, on a number of different funds, uh, both small ones and, and larger ones. Uh, I think I have a, a solid background in dealing with insurance companies and uh, both health and dental and vision and all the rest of it. So uh, I think we have a good group and uh, hopefully we can do well by the city. Thank you very much. So would you come forth and uh, where, where, where would you like them to come? So we, you're going to them? Okay, very good. And don't let them get away. We need pictures before they leave, so. After me, I state your name. Do solemnly affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution and the laws of the state of Arizona, and that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same and defend them against all enemies. And all foreign and domestic, foreign and, domestic. And, that and that I will faithfully and impartially, and impartially discharge, the duties discharge the duties of board member, of board member. According, to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability, so I do affirm. So I do affirm. Congratulations. Congratulations. If you would all come up to the corner in here, we're going to take a group picture. Thank you. All right, now we're down at 7.2. The item in business is a new series 12 liquor license for Chef Ben Sushi and Asian Express. City Clerk Lorraine Scott will present. Good evening, Mayor and Council Members. This item before you is to consider a new series 12 liquor license for Chef Ben Sushi and Asian Express located at 13824 West McDowell Road, Suite 107. The business has been open since November 2011 and would like to now offer alcoholic beverages. The location has been properly posted for the 20-day period and there has been no petitions or protests received. And that concludes my presentation. The applicant is here to, to uh, if you have any questions. Okay, in a moment. Um, would you like her to speak now or after? If, you'll, if you have questions, did you want to speak? Okay, we'll wait till the question time. All right, thank you. Are there any speaker okay. cards? 
No, Mayor. <laughs> Anybody in the audience want to speak? All right, then could I have a motion and a second to approve the request from Shirley Liu, agent to the Wasabi Express, Inc., doing business as Chef Ben Sushi and Asian Express for new Series 12 liquor license number 1207B038, located at 13824 West McDowell Road, Suite 107, Goodyear, Arizona, 85395. For the public, generally located near the northeast corner of Litchfield Road and McDowell Road. Do I hear a motion? So, so moved. Second. I heard a motion, I believe, from Councilman Stiff and a second from Vice Mayor Campbell. Open for council discussion. Any discussion? Councilman Bazillo. Feeding at your place many a times. Great restaurant. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other comments? Would Ms. Lou like to speak on behalf of anything, or is she fine? All right, great. Well, then we're going to get this to vote right now. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. The ayes have it. Congratulations, and thank you coming thank you. for coming. Thank you. All right, 7.3, and the business item is to authorize an expenditure for the construction services of the Corgate Water Reclamation Facility Head Works Upgrade Project. <laughs> yeah, that is a mouthful. Wastewater Superintendent Todd Car uh, Carpenter to present. Todd? Good evening, Mayor, Council. Uh, I am here to present the Headworks Upgrade Project at, at our Corrugate uh, Water Reclamation Facility. Um, this project was first identified through the IWMP, the in Integrated Water Master Plan, and the current funding for this project is coming out of, or as part of the, the five-year rate-funded CIP. Um, as you might know, the Corrugate facility has been in operation since 1997, and actually to date, most of the original equipment in the headwork structure is currently functioning and operating on a daily basis. Um, as you might expect, it is seeing some uh, wear and tear. As we knew that there was going to be funding for this project coming uh, into this fiscal year, we did hire Wilson Engineering uh, to help us define the scope uh, of the construction phase of this project, and in doing so, uh, we determined that um, the headwork structure uh, needed to have its uh, original coating, protective coating to the cement uh, structure uh, replaced and reapplied with new. Uh, we have a desire to realign the influent piping uh, to raise some check valves above grade to uh, reduce or mitigate some safety concerns that our operational and maintenance folks uh, have um, when they work uh, at the headwork structure on a routine basis. And then uh, we also uh, are desiring to add a an, a new auger screen to the facility. Um, this is a, a new, um, newer technology, more efficient, more effective in removing the debris out of the wastewater stream, which ultimately will help protect the, the downstream processes equipment in the treatment plant. Um, when working with the Wilson Engineering and identifying the, this project, we also realized that there was going to be some potential uh, unforeseen uh, challenges to this project, uh, as well as in order to keep within budget that we'd have to bypass the entire current uh, headwork structure uh, at one time during this project. So when we combine the, the factors of what we uh, ideally want to uh, attain through this project, uh, factoring in also the potentially the potential unknowns of this project and that tight um, structure or the tight schedule of this construction schedule, uh, we determined that um, using a, a job order contract through a cooperative agreement would be the best delivery method for this project. Um, with that in mind, uh, we sought out J.R. Philance Construction Company to work with us to, to uh, develop a scope uh, of work for the actual construction phase of this, or services phase of this project. And in doing so, they came up with a, a um, cost for this project at $971,645. Uh, for the entire project, and uh, with that, I'm here seeking approval for this project. Thank you very much. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? Then, can I have a motion and a second to authorize the expenditures of a 971645 to perform the construction services for the Corrigan WRF Headward, I guess you breathe that for it. Thank you. WRF Headworks Upgrade Project. This expenditure would allow the city to enter into a contract with the JL Finance Con Construction Company, Inc., for their services. Uh, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. 
second. I heard a motion from Councilman Zello and a second from Councilman Osborne. Open for council discussion. Councilman Osborne. Thank you, Todd, for the presentation. I, I think the upon Go ahead, Councilman. So I, I appreciate the um, what you just told us because when I was reading through this and I and I saw that it it said it needed flexibility in construction, and my first thought was, "Ooh, they're going to go over budget." <laughs> and so I, I appreciate what you just described, and um, I suppose that it, you mean you're still under budget because it looked like was uh, a million one was was you know what we actually gave towards that process. So I appreciate that you're still under budget and that you gave that description because I was a little concerned. Thank you. Yeah. Councilman Ham Hampton. Yes, thank you. So yeah, I went and did the tour out there. So that was pretty informative a couple weeks ago. So, mm -hmm. and I do like the bringing the, getting rid of the confined space. That'll definitely be good for our, our workers as well. So. Thank you for looking at the safety aspects of it as well. And then also, is that bypass gonna stay in if we need it for future, or is that a temporary no, bypass? No, it's just a temporary bypass. Okay. And then, I think that was the other thing. I think that was the last thing I had. And then the redundant screens is will be nice too, to yes. have more redundancy in that and be able to filter out things like that as well. So I, I like that you're looking, you're looking ahead and things like that, because this will be the, all our water comes in here so <laughs> so this is a very key key asset so thank you yeah <laughs> any any other comments all right that's great well then uh let's vote for that all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed the ayes have it thank you very much thank you, mayor council the next item is to authorize the contract amendments for the purchase and delivery and installation of granite Parks and Recreation Manager David Side to present. After those pictures, you think there's going to be a problem with this? <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> it's my pleasure to present uh, tonight's next item regarding the FY18 Asset Management Plan um, in the uh, Parks and Right of Way um, Department. Um, Yes, uh, a little over a year ago, I think I joked in front of you, uh, I had my work cut out for me to make a, a presentation on granite exciting, but um, <laughs> with, with Jeremy's earlier before and after photos, I think we can really um, appreciate um, you know, some of the work that uh, uh, we've been able to complete with the, the funds and resources that uh, Mayor and Council have, have given us. So um, we want to uh, continue uh, with that momentum and uh, continue uh, building upon what we've established through our FY16 efforts and, and have this as seamless a, as possible. Um, if we do take a, a step back real quick to FY16, so uh, again, a little over a year ago, I was in front of you um, with two contracts um, for the supply and delivery of granite um, in the amount of approximately 33,000 tons, and then a separate uh, contract for the installation of that 33,000 tons. So, that was the best um, bang for our buck, if you will, in working with procurement and uh, securing the uh, necessary vendors to uh, fulfill those projects. Uh, if you recall, that uh, initial FY16 project was a little over a year in duration. So um, we're just reaching up to the end point of our FY16 projects and we'll be completing those within the next four to six weeks. So um, I think we've had great feedback, great results. Uh, not quite done with it, but before we do complete, we just want to uh, go ahead and get queued up so we can continue the good work um, that the vendors have been doing. Um, and that gets me to our FY18. So back uh, last month, uh, when funds were approved as part of the FY18 budget, uh, we now have an additional $728,000 to spend on our FY18 projects. Okay. And tonight I come before you for your consideration of extending the original contracts to go ahead and complete that work. 
Uh, here's a little bit of a, a slideshow. So Jeremy gets the beautiful after photos. I'm going to come to you with a few before showed uh, photos. So these aren't the glamorous ones, but I assure you uh, next year at this time, we will come back with after photos. Um, granite, again, um, I, I don't think you really fully appreciate uh, its absence until you see it placed. Um, it degrades slowly over time, and um, it just breaks down in our harsh weather conditions. It's a natural phenomenon, and you can see some of these areas. Um, the granite is thinning, if not um, being fully broken down. So um, it kind of breaks down into the soil and uh, kind of uh, leaves a condition like you see there. So. Again, won't read you those locations, but uh, these are three various right-of-way locations that are on our FY18 asset management plan that uh, with your approval tonight, we will get after and make them beautiful. Here's a couple of medians. Uh, again, uh, the same story there. The granite breaks down over time. Um, there is some granite in these uh, medians, but you can see it's in need of, of some TLC some top dressing, and we definitely um, are eager and anxious to go ahead and, and dress these up. Um, the, the improvements that we see um, really uh, instill pride, I know, in the department, uh, the residents that uh, stop by and tell us um, the, the good comments and good work that we're doing um, makes it all worth the while. So uh, again, uh, three right-of-ways before, three medians here, and we'll come back with some after shots uh, next year and, and show you what we did. Um, the projects in FY18 are a little bit, um, a little bit smaller scale. FY16, if you recall, we had numerous projects that were due or either past due for replacement. So there was a little bit of a glut there that we had to get through. And now as we go forward on a more strategic uh, projectile, we will have a little bit more routine volume of projects, if you will. Uh, the specific projects for FY18, uh, 18, about 15 weeks. There's approximately six locations, and um, we, we anticipate uh, approximately November of this year till February of 18 to complete those. Um, the green portion on the uh, Gantt chart uh, on the right there on the graphic, so that those top green projects, as, as I mentioned earlier, we had 58 weeks to do um, the FY16 project, so a few of those projects spilled into um, FY18, but once we close those out, we will jump into the FY18 projects. Um, again, we will start up in the north, move our way down to the south, and um, uh, really duplicate kind of a, a good uh, practice that we, we established in FY16. Um, so tonight, uh, short and sweet, really the recommendation is to approve contract amendments to both the uh, purchase of uh, granite from cutting edge curbing and stonework um, for 8,502 tons of granite in the amount of $307,000 and 683 and uh, do amendment number two to Mariposa Landscape Arizona for the installation of that 8,502 tons of granite in the amount of $392,449. With that, I will entertain any questions you may have. Thank you, David. Nice presentation. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right. Then could I please have a motion and a second to approve the contract amendment on the CON 16-3546-A1 with Cutting Edge Curbing and Stonework, Inc. in the amount of 307683 for the purchase and the delivery of 8,502 tons of granite. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. I heard a motion from Councilman Stiff and a second from Vice Mayor Campo. Open for council discussion. Councilman Stiff. David, thank you for the brief presentation. Um, it was uh, it was a hard act to follow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the areas that you are showing are what we've been suspecting all along. So thank you. Thank Good luck with the project. Thank you. Any other comments? All right, let's put it up for a vote. All in the favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much. Now, um, I have another one here. Can I have a motion, a second, to approve the contract amendment of CON 16-3582-82A2 with the Mariposa Landscape Arizona, Inc. in the amount of 392449 for the installation of 8,502 tons of granite. Do I hear a motion? So, so moved. Second. 
I heard a motion from uh, from Councilman or uh, no Councilman Osborne and a second from Councilman Stipp, open for Council. I mean Pazillo. <laughs> I, had to, I had to do it at least one time tonight. Uh, open for council discussion. I just have a quick question, if yes, I may. Um, on my agenda that I printed out, uh, Madam City Clerk, it says that it's uh, 391,943. And is it, and then the mayor just announced 392. So what is it? Council member, um, excuse me, Vice Mayor Campbell and the agenda was amended to fix those numbers. So the numbers that were read were correct. 392? Correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, then it's a uh, council vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to 7.5 on business is to set the property tax levies for the fiscal year 2017 2018. And budget and research manager Lori Rigenroth will present. Lori? Mayor, council members, thank you. We're here to do our last task of adopting the FY18 budget. Mm -hmm. So you know where we've been, a number of meetings to get us to this point. Mm -hmm. uh, this, uh, this just happens to be the timing that's required by state statute that we have to adopt the property tax levy two weeks after you adopt the final budget. Uh, just to give you a quick sense of how the property tax plays into the city's budget, uh, the primary property tax pays for ongoing operating costs, and it's uh, approximately 10% of our general fund revenue. The secondary property tax uh, is levied to the extent that we have GO bonds that are paid with second, their debt services paid with uh, secondary property tax. Uh, in terms of our total amount of debt service, it's just over 15% of the city's debt service uh, in the FY18 budget. And that assumes that we'll be issuing t uh, $25 million in GO bonds uh, this year uh, to support the projects that are planned in the CIP. Uh, you've seen this chart before. Essentially, our combined property tax rate is dropping to a dollar seven three forty nine from the one eighty six twenty three uh, in FY seventeen, and our levy, our combined levy, is approximately the same amount. I don't think we've shown this chart this year. It's just showing you the history of our combined property tax levies over the last uh, ten plus years. Um, we at. The $13.2 million combined levy, we are still below the high levy in FY10, which was about $14.9 million. And with that, I'd ask that you approve the ordinance setting the property tax levies. Thank you. Are there any speaker cards? No, Mayor. Would anybody in the audience like to speak? All right, then will the city clerk please read ordinance number 17-1360 by title only, please. Adopt ordinance number 17-1360, levying upon the assessed valuation of the property within the city of Goodyear, subject to primary and secondary taxation, a certain amount, certain sum upon each $100 of valuation sufficient to raise the amounts estimated to be required in the annual budget for the purpose of paying for various expenses to raise the amount estimated to be received from other sources of revenues, provided funds for various bond redemptions, for the purpose of paying principal and interest upon bonded indebtedness, all for fiscal year ending the 30th day of June, 2018. Thank you. Could I have a motion and a second? So moved. Second. I have a motion from Councilman Osborne and a second from Councilman Hampton. Uh, open for council discussion. Okay, let's vote on it. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Pizzillo? Aye. Councilmember Loritano? Aye. Councilmember Stipp? Aye. Councilmember Hampton? Aye. Vice Mayor Campbell? Aye. Councilmember Osborne? Aye. Mayor Lord? Aye. Passes 7 0. Great. Does Council have any comments or accommodation, current events you want to share with us? Councilman Pizzello. I think the uh, Fourth of July event was fantastic. Uh, one of my little ones, Aubrey, I think, ate her weight in uh, watermelon. I never saw a little one eat so much watermelon at that place. But again, thank you, Nathan, for leading off the song that I had on my ACDC song for the fireworks. Thank you. Uh, 
Uh, but uh, I don't know how many people were there. There had to be, what, 13,000, 14,000, I'm guessing? Uh, 10,176. Yeah, I'm throwing a little high there for you. But anyway, it was a great time, great show. Uh, the whole family enjoyed it. Thank you. You put on a great event. And it, yes, Councilman Lortano. I just want to echo that to the whole staff and everybody that worked. It was a wonderful event. I have to say it's becoming one of the premier events, I think, for the Southwest Valley. There were so many people there who weren't from Goodyear. And I don't know how you eat 12 or 13 hot dogs. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. So thank you. And, and tell that to your whole department. Councilman Osborne? Yes, definitely. Uh, July 4th was, was wonderful. It's always a great family event and fun to be there. Um, I did want to tell um, council, and part of this is also kind of follow-up um, for Brian, too. Um, I had the opportunity to um, speak up in Australia last week, and uh, it was interesting because I, I kind of discussed um, what we had in our budget and the exciting things that, you know, we, we were all um, having done. And, um, and then I took some questions, and... Um, of course, you know, the mall question came up, and, uh, and I discussed that, and it, and it made me think that, you know, I, I look forward to um, our future conversations about the area, but I realized as I described what I saw as where retail was going and what the future may be, because um, who knows what it will be at this point, but mall is ne not necessarily the word to use anymore because it's what people conjure in their mind when you say that. Because, you know, we may think of it as it's going to be a living center or it's going to be a community impact area. I don't know what you're, you know, some people might call it an entertainment district. You know, it will have to be branded in some way. But um, unfortunately, you use the word mall and, and there's still this, this mindset that we have. And what some people think that we're holding on to, which I know is not accurate, but you know that will be a conversation that I think will be good for us to have as we discuss that in the future. Um, the other thing that um, they asked about was, will we fight for the time when redistricting comes in? We will all be one city. <laughs> the other question was, uh, well, actually, this one kind of took me by surprise. Um, and so I'll need some help for follow-up on this one. But I had a complaint about our library. And um, it, was, it was, all we ever hear is great things, and we, and we see the, the statistics. But this gentleman, and he, he admittedly so, said, you know, I'm older. I'm looking for books, and they're not there. If you want to play video games or you want to get this or that, you know, it's, it's fine. But he specifically wanted World War II books. And, um, and, I, and I thought about it. I was like, oh, and... I was really taken aback because I've, we've heard such great things, but then I, I kind of wondered, okay, first of all, he may not understand how to get things, and you don't know what to ask for if you don't see books necessarily. And I just thought helping him know where things are, explaining what we have available, but then also, I guess, just as a council member, asking how do we um, help a different generation because that's what libraries are about or multiple generations and so you have obviously the families and the kids and the new technology that we all live by but but if you still have people that don't you know how do they get their information so um i would like i, I guess a little follow-up on that part thanks anybody else all right then city manager i'm going to turn it over to you do you have anything to report uh, Mayor and Council, and, and, on the, and thanks for the recognition of the Star Spangled Fourth event. Well, we estimated uh, a bit over 10,000. Back to your, your point, uh, Council Member Pizzillo, there were about 5,000 that were on the perimeter of that, actually not in the park itself. So it was quite a few more um, in, in the vicinity that actually enjoyed that as well. But uh, thank you for the recognition. I know uh, a lot of coordination with staff getting uh, traffic in and out as well and then the events uh, of that evening. I do have uh, one item for council. As consistent in our city code, when we bring on a uh, director level position, it, it's brought up at the next available council meeting as far as introductions. And I'm very pleased tonight to introduce two people from uh, to my left, uh, Darcy McCracken as our incoming city clerk 
Um, as you're aware, Maureen Scott is leaving us. Her last day is actually next Tuesday morning. So if you get a chance, um, please bother her. Um, and she will be here uh, next Monday evening for our council meeting before we go on break. But a little bit about Darcy. And I've actually had the privilege of knowing <clears throat> Darcy for a while as well as a fellow Blue Blazer squadron member. She was in the inaugural class and as a life member, which you get that by uh, heavy participation in supporting the mission of the men and women and families at Luke Air Force Base. So, so appreciate that. On her professional side, um, Darcy was a deputy city clerk for Glendale for more than 12 years, total of 30 years in many different capacities at Glendale, including police, city court, city manager's office, and of course, uh, last uh, has been in the city clerk's office. She does have a bachelor's degree from ASU and a master's from NAU. Nothing from U of A? No. Okay, just thought I'd ask. And she does have several certificates, certified public manager, and you get that from ASU, uh, master's municipal clerk through the International Institute of Municipal Courts, and active in the Municipal Clerks Association, as I talked about earlier, Blue Blazer Squadron. Uh, one thing, and, and proud of, uh, she was named the first recipient of the Arizona Municipal Clerks Deputy Clerk of the Year Award in 2016. So that's the first time they did that award, and she was recognized for that. Um, so a lot of experience she's bringing here to fill Marine shoes, and uh, excited to, to have you on board. So thank you. And Mayor and Council, that, that's all I have for this evening. Is there any summary, a staff summary follow-up action from anybody here? I do. Yes. Uh, well, this must have been my lucky day because my third and fourth question was shared with everybody, in God included. Uh, but I had asked how we filled the city clerk position mm -hmm. uh, only because I had received two phone calls and an email from someone, three different folks that said, uh, is it advertised, blah, blah, blah. And by then it was already over. So you had already selected someone or read in the newspaper who it was before the city let us know who it was. Uh, and that's why I sent the email. And then my second concern is I did request for information regarding the 2009 election because that was Joe's in my election. And I'm going to be asking for more information for my background to be able to intelligently discuss the election when it comes as a work session. So should I send my request to all of council to let them know what I'm asking? Or, or as I ask, you're going to send it out to everybody? I mean, how is this handled now? I don't understand. It's always been handled the way well, no, but, not necessarily. Mayor and council member, or Vice Mayor Campbell, if I may. So questions come to management or staff, and, and right. we really try and answer you directly. And it's, it's uh, I would tell you it's subjective when it comes to, okay, what information do we think uh, should be relevant to other council members being aware of that? As you notice in those, in the communications, we just identified that it was a question right. asked by a council member, so we're not specific there. But if we feel like it's information that could be a benefit to council, because we will have in August a discussion on the over-under votes so this is some background information that, that may help out in that dialogue as we get closer. But uh, uh, it's, it's really uh, comes down to do we think it's relevant for the rest of council to know. Okay. Well, I'm going to ask more questions about the election for the August, and I need to ask it before I leave town the 18th of July. Okay. So maybe I should just give you all the list, and you can send it to everybody, and then or tell me where to go look for it so that I can talk intelligently on this issue since it has been brought up in the last election, and it's not something we brought up when we ran. Uh, and Vice, Vice Mayor, if you have questions, please get those to us and we'll, we'll get those answered. Some cases, again, if we look like there's relevance for the balance of council to be aware of that, in some cases, it, it's just as information for you. But if you give me the questions, uh, we will we'll work on getting you answers. Thank you. Anything else? Councilman Stipp. <coughs> it's a follow-up. Sorry, Maureen. I don't believe Maureen will be here next Monday night. She said she would. No, no she she's won't. not going to be oh, here. Oh, so. thank, thank you for that. I know your last day is Tuesday morning, ah, no. so, but I guess she's uh, chose not to be here Monday night. Sorry about that. 
So with, with that, um, as the chair of the public safety retirement boards, the city clerk serves as the secretary to those boards. So I have had the um, great privilege of working very closely with Maureen for the four years, four and a half years that she's been the city clerk. And it has been a wonderful experience. And I shared that with Maureen earlier, so I won't go into all the details. But um, for me personally, I just want to make sure that you heard this publicly as well. I will miss you and look forward to uh, seeing you up in Prescott sometime. Uh, but thank you for everything that you did to serve the pension board and um, look forward to, uh, to, our, to the future for you. Thank you. Well, while you're on that subject, you know how I feel about you. Uh, you've been a real partner to me. Um, and uh, uh, we've kind of propped each other up on things that have happened on the agenda. And I, I really appreciate your friendship. I also appreciate uh, your husband and your military background and your service to the United States. Um, so I'm going to miss you. Um, and we're going to check up on you. Of course, now I know somebody in Prescott. So we can go visit, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is going to be, um, I know this is a quick move for your real military move, isn't it? It's like, yes, it is. So, but I know you're going to do well, uh, and they're going to love you like we do. And so we'll miss you a great deal, but I just know Darcy is going to just slide right on there and do a, a really good job for us and be very comfortable, especially with all your expertise and your background. We really appreciate that. And any other comments? Yes. Councilor Artano, sure. Maureen, we're going to miss you. Thank you for You are just absolutely such an asset to the city. Thank you so much. And we will come stalk you, especially in July and August. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll take you out to lunch when it's like not 120 degrees up there. So I'm sure you'll love it up there. I'm sure you'll have a wonderful time and do a wonderful for that city. But we will miss you here. So thank you for everything you've done. And we see you tomorrow. So, Councilman Osborne. You, you thought you were going to slide under the radar, didn't you? Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Maureen, thank you. Thank you for your professionalism. Thank you for everything you've done for Goodyear. Thank you for all the committee meetings and uh, the different things that you've been a part of for us. I, I truly appreciate it. Thank you for your friendship. Thank you um, as one tiger mom to the other. Appreciate it. Um, and uh, you will now be going to my mother's world in Prescott. So good luck. And uh, <laughs> I, I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Thanks. Any other comments? Just press the sure. Yeah, I just want to say thank you, too. I've only been here a short amount of time, but I appreciate working with you through the different election cycles. So thank you very much. <laughs> you, really got, you, you really got to know her well during that time, did, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. That was a so quick, yeah. Yeah. Mayor, if I may, uh, Maureen would like to say a couple words, sure. too, now that we know it's her last official evening yeah, here. Okay. <laughs> well, now that we have Darcy here, I don't need to be here next Monday night because Sue will be back, so she is going to be in charge. So, ah. I just want to thank all of you. I have just so thoroughly enjoyed working with you all these years. Of course, you know, I've been with the city over 11 years now, and, of course, Brandon, I haven't worked Sir, excuse me, Councilmember Hampton. I have enjoyed working with you in the election process, but I just want to thank everybody. I've enjoyed my relationships with everybody. And I'm, I, even though when I moved to Arizona, I did not start here right away. I worked out elsewhere, but I'll tell you what, this city is amazing. When I first came into this city, I was amazed, and I've told the story before, that bulk trash Goodyear picks up bulk trash, <laughs> and it's still, you know, you drive into the city, and it's absolutely beautiful, and this council has done a fantastic job keeping the city up, and it's growing. I am going to miss everybody. I'm going to miss this beautiful city. Uh, this opportunity came up very quickly, and it just seemed like it was the thing to do, and everything's falling in place very well. Thank you again. I, I will miss everybody, and staff, too, especially, too. Our best to you. you. All right, with that, does council have any inquiries of staff before we leave tonight? None? Okay. Does anyone have anything, uh, future agenda items you would like us to cover? And, of course, that will go on to, uh, probably not next time. It'll go on next year. So, okay. All right, then I'm going to announce the next meeting, work session, and regular meeting, special meeting on July 17th. This meeting is adjourned.